cover the week in UFO and alien news is our correspondent that spends a lot of time up there already anyways. Please give it up for Chad the Bird, everybody! <laughs> All right, humans, here's what's up. You're not alone in the universe because you're not. There, I saved you 10 minutes. If you want to get up and get like a drink or go rock a piss, go ahead, there's time. That was the thesis statement. <laughs> that was a direct thesis too. That's the flavor of statement that states the explicit reason, the why, the rationale, if you want to be cursive about it. As opposed to an indirect thesis, which is like a tease to keep you on the hook, on the line, waiting for the ride because you want more than just, hey, I know some shit, stick around. But I figure we're all busy. Most of us are wired or tapped out. Plus, thanks to TikTok, we all have the attention span of a fucking gremlin. So yeah, if you got shit to do, go do that. I'll keep going. You can turn back in or not. It's up to you. Shit, even I got shit to do right now, and it's this. But in the meantime, go grab a snack. For those of you still sticking around, yeah, it's true. You're not alone in the universe. You're not even alone on this planet. Fuck, you're not even alone when you're in your home. Even when you're alone, you don't think bugs have a story to tell? Ask a house centipede about his day, and it'll tell you, fuck, man, it's rough. I'm just eating bugs or total assholes for you out here doing my job like a pro, but because I got too many legs, I'm always at risk for a squishing, you know? I got one at my place. I was on his podcast. <laughs> UFOs have long been regulated to fringe science because there were wars happening. And also, people or dicks is a strong enough plot line to keep going. There's no need to complicate it. <laughs> but since people have had the ability to tell somebody some shit that they saw, they've been seeing things in the sky. The first credited post-World War II modern era UFO sighting was in 1947. That's the Kenneth Arnold sighting when he, Kenneth Arnold, so it's not just a clever name for a sighting, saw... <laughs> a string of nine shiny objects around Mount Rainier National Park in Washington at speeds that Arnold estimated at a minimum of 1,200 miles an hour, whose story gave birth to the term flying saucer and flying disc. But like, the fact that it is recognized as the first credited post-World War II modern era UFO sighting should tell you all you need to know about how much you humans love to talk about weird shit you saw in the sky. Sometimes, it's shit that isn't what you think it is. Who hasn't called the Ghostbusters on a coat rack before? Fuck, I almost shot an end table one night. It was new and I forgot I had it. But every now and then, some UFO stories come out that are pretty fucking believable, credible, decent sounding enough that you dig it because it's a thing that makes you go, hmm. Speaking of the 90s, if it wasn't for UFO sightings, you wouldn't have summoned Robert Stack for Unsolved Mysteries. And an entire generation would be different, would not have the stone-jawed brass it has to question things, because there's so much to question. Without Robert Stack constantly reminding them that there's shit out there you don't understand, and it will eat you, so pay attention Wednesday nights. And then they switched it to Fridays in 1994, which some claim was the reason for its decline in ratings. Or was it? No, it was actually because it was canceled by NBC. And then it was picked up by CBS. It aired until 1999 when Robert Stack and Virginia Madsen were co-hosting. But then it was canceled. And they overdubbed Virginia Madsen's voice with Robert Stack's when the episodes reran on cable. Or did they? No, 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 they did. This is a direct thesis. And since 2021, according to the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, quote, the U.S. government has received over 350 new reports of what the U.S. government terms unidentified aerial phenomenon, a.k.a. UFO, now UAP, which is unexplained aerial phenomena because it needed to glow up. The Pentagon <laughs> office that gives it the old Robert stack found that like half of those are balloons or balloon entities, which doesn't make me feel any less freaked out about it because like... <laughs> I don't know what a balloon entity eats. And I feel like that's question one. <laughs> that also leaves 171 reports that, quote, continue to be unexplained by the U.S. government. The Defense Department investigated under pressure from Congress a bunch of them because it was naval pilots seeing weird shit in the sky. And in 2021, they released a report that basically concluded that, quote, we were able to identify one reported UAP with high confidence. In that case, we identified the object as a large deflated balloon. The others remain unexplained. But like, how big was that balloon? And whose party was it for? <laughs> Even Obama said that during his time in the White House, quote, what is true, 
and I'm actually being serious here, there's footage and records of objects in the sky that we don't know exactly what they are. And now here we are, 2023, and the House of Representatives is planning to investigate claims that the U.S. is harboring UAPs and dead aliens. Now, if you're hearing the, Uf the U.S. is investigating a lot, you're not crazy, you're fine. The U.S. has the highest number of UAP sightings in the world by a fuck ton. 92% of all UAP sightings, 126,094 reported sightings across the state because ass, grass, gas, and crazy shit we see late night after a few shots and a Nas, we go hard out here, baby. So either cosmic dragsters fucking dig this country because fast food or it's because we're the planet's loud-ass neighbors that play tunes, although bitching, too loud at weird hours, we throw ragers with fried goods that can be smelled from space and fight really loudly when everyone's getting to that point. Whatever it is, it really is a us problem. Recently, one of our former government intelligence officials, David Grutch of the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency and the National Reconnaissance Office, Grutches, came forward as a whistleblower with information that he says he was part of Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon Task Force because if we can prove the X-Files were real, we don't need healthcare. And during his time... <laughs> and during his time, he learned of a secret government program that has found and is keeping non-terrestrial, that's a polite way of saying E.T., though if I were in the position of an outer space visitor to this planet, I would prefer E.T., because I would get candy. Equipment found at crash sites, quote, I thought it was totally nuts, and I thought at first I was being deceived. It was a ruse. People started to confide in me, approach me. I have plenty of senior former intelligence officers that came to me, many of which I knew my whole career, that concluded in me and confided in me that they were part of a program. That program was tasked with, quote, retrieving non-human origin technical vehicles, call it a spacecraft if you will, non-human exotic origin vehicles that have either landed or crashed, including dead aliens, quote, naturally when you recover something that's either landed or crashed, sometimes you encounter dead pilots, and believe it or not, as fantastical as that sounds, it's true. So basically the MIB, but less swag, are in a Cold War type sneaky snack deal to keep aliens from foreign governments so we can use it, and we've been doing it for decades. And so credible is Grutch that James Comer of the White House Oversight Committee Comers have decided to hold a hearing about it. When? Soon. Who? Top men. <laughs> now Grutch could not show us any of the reports he gave, and he didn't see anything with his own face it was all secondhand from reputable people throughout his career. But, I mean, it's not like it's impossible that what Grutch says is true. You remember 2016 when the Cubs won the World Series and the timeline re reset <laughs> because of Spider-Man or whatever? And it should not shock anyone's balls that the American government has some secret shit they found that they don't know what it is. But is it from space? And if it is, why? Why is it from space? <laughs> what is the story there? There were like a couple of Zazians on a ride from their entire party, like a lone drifter, like a pair of cosmic Thelma and Louisians <laughs> running from the law, and they took a wrong Z-axis and ended up drifting into a forest in Indiana, and then that's it? That's the cosmic truth of all things? We're not alone, there's also shitty drivers everywhere? <laughs> I mean, I buy it. The truth is out there, man. I love the writing on this season of America. It's fucking nuts. And we don't have to wait too long for more shit to go down. April 30th, 2023. A Las Vegas family called the police late at night because something crashed in their yard and they saw, quote, an eight-foot person standing behind it and another one inside. It had big eyes and it's looking at us. It's still here, I swear to God, this is not a joke, this is actually, we're terrified. They're like eight feet, nine feet, 10 feet. They look like aliens to us. Big eyes, they have big eyes, like I can't explain it, and big mouths, like I can't explain it. They're 100% not human. Which freaked out the Vegas cops because, and this is where Robert Stack would pop out and scare the shit out of your kids. <laughs> Around the same time, an LVPD officer's body camera recorded a bright light streaking across the sky. 
Several people across Eastern California, Nevada, and Utah reported seeing that flash. According to the American Meteor Society, quote, I'm so nervous right now, one cop has heard saying on the body cam. I have butterflies, bro. I saw a shooting star, and now these people says there's aliens in their backyard? At one point, he stops an SUV to ask, and this is true, this might sound like a really dumb question, but did you guys see anything fall out of the sky? And how do you answer that when what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas? <laughs> but fuck, Grutch might be right. The truth is somewhere. But what yanks my indirect thesis is that when it comes to UAPs, it's always brought to light by either a military dude so high up that I cannot understand shit that he's saying because I do not speak acronym, or it's like a fringy one guy that pops up saying, trust me, bro, there's a whole network of one guys that are the one guy in the friend group that always knows shit. CERN rips a fucking hole in the universe, and we have every science, TikTok, and Vox right, and Vice Report, and Instagram hot taker rizzing the tech like they're asking him out to prom. But when it comes to aliens, UFOs, and UAPs, it's always, trust me, I can't say much more. I can't give you specifics, but like I know some shit. Now, granted, that's because things are classified. And you don't want to talk about classified things. That's a secret. You pinky swore. But they kind of already threw that shit out the window anyway. So why not dive the fuck in? Because it's a national security risk? Well, then why the fuck are you saying anything? <laughs> now, my problem, my ish, my hot take, is not that this guy is nuts, or that any of the scientists, Air Force pilots, military officials, or a couple of dudes in t-shirts chilling in Las Vegas saw a fucking monster in their backyard tall enough to dunk on LeBron, <laughs> are grifting, or shifty, or even care that you care. My peeve is why is this shit classified at all? The astronomical world shits itself over seeing an interstellar fart from a million years ago why is finding out space societies have made the fucking trip to check in such a secret? You'd think if that happened, first and foremost, since America wants to always be at the front, we'd have released that info and thrown a goddamn movie premiere about it. And all we would do is go, huh, that's fucking awesome. I hope they don't have diseases and are not from Mars, because I saw that movie already, so do different. <laughs> we just want to see what they look like. Do they have tubes? Are they tubes? Is it a tube culture? <laughs> Human, the problem is not that people are seeing weird shit. It's that we're not getting a direct thesis about it. So to reiterate mine, you are not alone. You are part of the vast and amazing everything. Made of the same stuff as stars, says Carl Sagan. The universe itself reflecting on itself. There's no mathematical way that in the infinite space that our swirly beach party is the only one in the darkness. Take comfort in the statistics. Wait for the particulars and keep being your beautiful universal selves that love to look at the stars because they're fucking cool and that enough is enough to make me feel at home. But if I'm wrong, I'm sorry I wasted your time. That's why I give my thesis is up front. I love you, good night. <laughs> Chad the bird, everybody, Chad the bird.